language processing for sanction screening. Our speaker, Mutazim Zavavi, is a product manager of Mosin and will give you an overview of how exactly they can use NLP for that. Please take it away. Great. Uh, Lucy, thank you so much for uh, taking the time for this introduction. Um, just a quick overview. Mosin is a data analytics company based in Saudi Arabia. We, uh, we deal with many clients from various sectors, insurance, government, financial institutions. Uh, we've been, we spent a couple of the months developing our own natural language processing uh, uh, algorithms and specifically in names matching. And uh, recently we focused on sanction screening as an application. We believe there is a, a big market uh, here in the region. So, so yeah, uh, Focal is our sanction screening solution. Um, and the goal of this presentation is that we, uh, first of all, go through what is uh, sanctions uh, screening. And then we talk about the current challenges um, associated in the market and the current technologies. And then we'll go through a demo of showing how basically we do sanction screening uh, uh, in our applications. So what is sanction screening? So sanction screening is a requirement by every financial institution, that's uh, banks, fintechs, uh, insurance companies, uh, investment firms. Uh, what they need to do is they, uh, they basically take the customer information um, and then they screen that information against uh, sanctions lists. So um, a sanctions list is basically uh, a database of names that governments uh, um, collect and uh, record over time. Uh, and the reason is, uh, the idea behind this is that they want to make sure that every customer who enters a financial institution is not a high-risk individual. So they're essentially taking a customer information and then screening against a list of more than 3 million names. Um, so that's uh, essentially what, uh, what sanction screening uh, is. Um, let's go here. So, so yeah, um, well, when it comes to sanctions lists, when it comes to sanctions lists, uh, there are three main uh, sanctions lists here. Uh, one is sanctioned individuals, and basically those are individuals who, are, who have been associated with terrorism, drug dealing, uh, money laundering, um, and typically they're known by uh, governments and their, their customer information are uh, well recorded. Um, and then there is politically exposed uh, persons. Uh, essentially, those are people who uh, they work in a prominent public function. They could be ministers, presidents, vice presidents, anyone who's very much like um, exposed in the, in the political arena. Um, typically those people, they have power and they have money, so they're considered the high risk um, individuals. And then there are the adverse media, uh, which is basically any negative mention of someone in the news or articles or uh, social media or online. So those are typically the type of uh, entities that uh, uh, in financial institutions wanna screen against. Um, and then, and it's, it's, it's a top requirement for these institutions because one, um, there are uh, lots of uh, regulations. So essentially every bank or FinTech finance or insurance company is regulated and they have to screen every single customer, not only when they join a bank or an institution, but also on an ongoing basis. So uh, whenever there's an update on the sanctions list, you wanna make sure that they're, they're captured um, before this individual uh, does any sort of high risk transactions. And there is the reputational risk, which is um, when a bank, for example, uh, passes uh, a transaction by a high-risk individual, or when a bank registers a high-risk individual, if if the regulator knows about it, it's a uh, it's it's a bad uh, reputational issue for for the bank. Uh, and there are rising costs, and by that I mean the process of um, uh, one is is. Uh, uh, clearing all these false alerts uh, when the system screens a, a customer information. So let's say they screen my name and there is say 10 alerts. Um, these alerts is because the system is not smart enough in, um, in uh, detecting the right individuals in the right uh, sanctions list. So the more false alerts you have, the more costs uh, associated with, with compliance um, basically. Um, so when we when we when we talk to mean institutions, uh, we noticed that a lot of them they're reporting high rates of uh, false positive of false positives, um, and the reason is that um, they they're they're essentially using um, poor um, Arabic names matching uh, technologies, um, and then when this happens, you're essentially like causing lots of false alerts, and your, and your team is is constantly um, um, uh, concerned about this. 
Um, and the main challenges of this is that you, um, it, as I mentioned, it, it has costly operations. It increases the risk of a false negative because your, your team is essentially focused on clearing all these false alerts. You might miss a real uh, hit. And there is the reputation damage, which I also talked about. So let's talk about the general challenges um, in the techniques of, of screening uh, names. Um, so the number one challenge here is that there is no ground truth when it comes to entities information. And what I mean by that is, so you have two parts. You have the customer information, and then you have the sanctions list, right? So if a high-risk individual knows if they are a high-risk individual, they're going to try their best to manipulate their names or change their date of birth, place of birth. They're going to try their heart, their best to, to change that. Um, and there is the part uh, when it comes to the inaccuracy of the sanctions list. So these individual and sanctions list, they're based on investigations by governments, um, local agencies. Um, they're not based on like hard proof, like say like an ID. So even then the ID could be manipulated. So you have two, two, two components here that are essentially not necessarily uh, right. Um, so that's one example here. If you have this entity, Muhammad H. Kahtani, and then you have his date of birth, uh, how can you know that those two entities are the same? So this is the, the, the core gist of a sanction screening technology. So when it comes to Arabic, um, if you take an Arabic name, that's in this case, Muhammad Hussein Abu Qadir, uh, written Arabic, you can translate it, transliterate it in many, into many uh, various possible variations. Um, and if you say like each name has 10 variations, if you have three names, then you're talking about a thousand variations, which is a very uh, sophisticated problem to solve. Um, and when it comes to Arabic, there's inherent complexity. Uh, first is the absence of diacritics. Diacritics are basically, uh, the way to think about it are like subletters that tell you more about the sound or how a word is is uh, is pronounced. So if you take this this name Omar um, without the diacritics, which are subletters, and so diacritics are not uh, typical in writing, um, so the system might transliterate it into multiple various uh, possible variations, which is as I mentioned, decreases the risk of false positives. Um, in this case here. Uh, al uh, where some letters in Arabic, they can be written in multiple various ways in English. For example, Harf al Qaf can be written in Q, K, J. Um, so that's uh, also, uh, it increases the risk of false positives. And we noticed in the local market that the general percentage of false positives is 28%, uh, which is a quite uh, a big of a, of a percentage. Another uh, challenge here are. Uh, multiple component NAS names. So this is common in, in, in uh, GCC, the GCC when you have multiple component last names. Sometimes you have a missing uh, last name or a missing middle name. Sometimes you have a common misspellings. Um, and I, as I mentioned, uh, spelling variations is also an important uh, thing to focus on. Um, missing spaces, initials, and then similar names. Um, so those are also additional challenges when it comes to uh, specific to, to Arabic and in general about names matching. Um, so here I'll, I'll talk about the current technologies that are being used um, in, in uh, for names matching. So there are two uh, main uh, technologies that are currently being used. One is edit distance. So edit distance is the uh, it basically depends on the minimum number of edits that you can do to a single phrase in order to change it to a different phrase. So in this case, uh, if we have the name Muhammad Ahmed Khalid, I can change all these characters and I'm going to end up with a completely different name. So Muhammad Ahmed Khalid can, translate, can be written or uh, can be transformed to Muhammad Hamad Khalil, which is a completely different name. Um, it could be transformed to Muhammad Hamid Khalil, which is also a different uh, entity. Uh, so this is the specific challenge of, uh, of edit distance. So, and then there is the other one, which is phonetic similarity. Uh, and the way it works is that you take a phrase or a name, and then you use AI to uh, represent that name in a code. 
Um, so in this case, we have Nawaf, Nayef, which are different names, but they're essentially coded as NF, so, uh, which is also a challenge for uh, the screening system. Uh, there is also Mana and Muna, which are different names, but they're also encoded in the same um, code. So those are like one of the main two um, uh, technologies that are currently being used. Um, and what we do is we use a combination of these technologies and then we focus on the Arabic linguistics uh, part. So at Focal, we built a transliteration engine uh, based on artificial intelligence. And what it does, it takes the um, uh, Arabic name and it figures out all the possible variations for that name. Um, and then we do linguistics analysis is when we take the name itself and we figure out the vowels, the consonants, uh, all these uh, minute or granular Arabic uh, uh, features that are not essentially covered by other uh, systems. Um, and then the, there's the error detection, which relies on those character-based um, uh, names matching, which is the one which is around the added distance um, algorithm. So let's let's go through a, a quick demo where we can uh, demonstrate some of the ideas of how uh, we do it at Focal. So, so we have here the uh, main dashboard. Um, let's say we want to take this entity. So this is a sanctioned entity. His name is Hassan Tahir Ways. Um, if we write it in the same way, we're expected to find this entity, of course. But what we can do is that we can change, let's say, the um, some of the variations. So, so double S, we have one S. Instead of the D, we change the T to uh, from a D to T, and then we change the last name. Um, and then here we specify the threshold. So we typically go with a 70% threshold, which is a convenient matching score for sanction screening. Uh, and here we're, we're searching across uh, a database of more than three million names. So if I hit the screen button. I'm expected to see the same entity, even though they're both uh, written differently. So uh, another thing we can do is we can write the same entity, but using the Arabic language. So I can write his name here. And we're expected to hit the, and find the same entity. Um, another thing we can do is we can introduce some sort of like character-based errors. So Hassan, um, we do, instead of Tahir, we add F. And then typically, if this name is written this way, but what I can do is I can switch those last two characters as an example. And then I do the screening and I'm expected to see um, the, the same entity that's uh, in the sanctions list. But let's assume that Barack Obama wants to register for a bank. And let's say his last name, his name is, is written in Arabic, and I can also use um, uh, his name written in Arabic to screen against uh, a sanctuary. So I'll remove these filters. And I can also get that uh, name. I can, for example, do some minor changes here where I change Hussein to Hassan. Um, we'll get the same results, but you'll get a lower uh, matching score um, here. Let's take uh, another example. Um, oops. So let's say we we write the, his name in a, this way, for example. We do the screening, and then we get the same um, entity here. Um, we can let's say another example where I take the first name and I only put it as initial, so I don't know who's um, this person is, um, and then I do, and I add this last name here. Uh, as you can see, you'll get uh, many um, possible hits of this entity um, because we have less filters or less information. Um, the more we add, so let's say, for example, I'm looking for this entity right here. Uh, what I do is I'll take their nationality and date of birth, and what the system will do, so it was 1950, I'll, it was 1951, I'll make it 1950. And then I add Yemen. Uh, uh, what the system is gonna do, it's essentially gonna um, 
shift the scores higher for that specific entity that matched all these credentials and lower intentionally lower all the other score all the other names that are not matching the same uh, um, uh, credentials um, and the way another like idea that we do here is that we put a lot of uh, weight weights on the um, first and last names because those are like typically the two uh, identification or like the, those are the two components that will tell you a person is is, is who essentially. Um, so if I take uh, the example of Muhammad uh, Abdullah Khalifa and I do the screening, um, it will show you all the all the names that are first of all like close to this name uh, which have Abdullah, but it will also start showing you names that have different um, uh, middle names, but they're ranked in the lower, uh, they, the system is giving it lower scores because we're putting more weights on the um, first and the, uh, the last name. Um, so we talked previously about uh, phonetics uh, in their code. Uh, we, we talked about how like Nawaf and Naif, they're coded as the same, uh, they have the same phonetic code um, but the way we use it here is that we use phonetics and the combination of like the Arabic linguistics. Um, so what I can do is I can write Nawaf here, for example. And the system automatically uh, will transliterate it into all the possible variations. So Nawaf, uh, those are like all the entities on different sanctions lists that have the same uh, name. Now, if we were using if we were using a character-based algorithms by itself, we're going to see naif. We're going to see other uh, names in this list. And take another example. Uh, uh, let's say Hussein Qadir Sheikh. Uh, we have one entity in, this, uh, uh, in the sanction list. I can change it to a middle name only and change the last name to a different variation and then change the, the first name to, and I hit the screen. Uh, and I, now I see uh, more variations because there are more uh, entities with the same Hussein Qadir uh, Sheikh. Um, but again here, we also show you um, other names because essentially, as I mentioned, we treat uh, initials are not as ground truth, so we, we give it less uh, weights and we try to show you more entities that could be uh, the entity that you're looking for in case the customer himself or herself is manipulating um, the names. Um, yeah. Um, cool. Okay. So, um, like before opening up, yeah, thanks again for the talk and uh, thanks for the, uh, for the very good presentation and yeah i think uh the thing uh, like we can have discussions now